Ford. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, throughout the, this 2019 season? But it certainly seems like Chevy has figured it out at least this year. Well, uh, you know, Chevrolet, just like the, their counterpart manufacturers in Toyota and Ford, uh, you know, they, they have a consolidated engine shaft between either Hendrick Power or ECR Power. So those 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 engines have traditionally performed fairly well. But, again, uh, you know, it, it, and I haven't seen a lot of the speed charts yet for, for the Xfinity series just because, um, you know, I think they practiced one time yesterday. Um, you know, if – if their counterparts, or you know, if they're the, you know, let's just take the the Rash Fenway engine or or the JGR engines, which are or TRD engines, which are powering Toyota, um, you know, they they've got to figure out, like in the Cup Series, like I mentioned a minute ago, they need to figure out the long runs. And while they have some flat out speed in qualifying or single car runs, things like that, you have to have long run speed in these packs, these, these packs of. 40 cars out there, um, and I think, you know, if they can figure that out, then I think they'll be okay. Um, you know, as, as Chevrolet has transitioned over to the Camaro, you know, the first year of the Camaro, you know, just like traditionally that any manufacturer that comes into the sport or a, a manufacturer that brings a new engine or, or a new body or a new template into the sport, then then traditionally it's taken them a year or so for to figure this whole you know this whole package out. And I think Chevrolet in the Xfinity series, which has run the Camaro body for much longer, have run this engine package for much longer, I think that at this point they are ahead of, you know, sometimes their counterparts and now Toyota especially because they're bringing in the Supra this year. So uh, they're ahead of them. Uh, I think they're a little bit ahead of the Mustangs because the Mustangs haven't been in the series for as long. And uh, aside from the engines, I, I, I think that, you know, we could we could see with them definitely going back to victory lane because of just where they are in, in the development of their car. Well, we could hear the cars in the background there. I'm jealous. Uh, uh, Steve, but uh, the Xfinity's, uh, I believe, doing qualifying right now. Ryan Sieg at the top uh, speed right now, 186.660 at the last one that was recorded. Talk with us a little bit. Oh, let me change that. That is Austin Cedric, uh, who just got the top speed, uh, and uh, now Ryan Sieg is back on top here. But uh, let's talk. Uh, we were going to talk about Ryan Sieg, so we'll just go ahead and start with him. This uh, keeps. Uh, Keeps changing as we look at it, but go ahead, sir. You know, Ryan Sieg just, uh, I was, he was talking a little bit yesterday about how this year they brought on some new sponsors and some sponsors that are going to be able to better fund this team. They're talking about they're building or bought brand new uh, equipment for this year, that they've improved upon their equipment from last year. So for for Ryan Sieg and those guys have been again they're they're another they're another team that has needed some help that they finally have now gotten it and I think that for him he's a he's a small team a family team out of Georgia and they signed funny enough they, one of their sponsors this year Larry's Hard Lemonade is actually from right down the road from me in Virginia. And they'll be on the car for, for this weekend as well as part of the remaining year. Um, but for them, they've traditionally gone from race to race, sponsor to sponsor, um, just trying to keep the doors open, not had the best performance uh, at all. And they, they have seen to finally now possibly have gotten that. So let's move on down to. We're, I'm just going down from what I'm seeing here on the on the leaderboard right now. I know it's just uh, qualifying, I believe, uh, but uh, uh, we, we look at Gray Galding, which is just a little bit behind Ryan Sieg at 187.942 currently, anyway. Uh, so let's just talk a little bit about him. The number eight car, Gray Galding. Uh, you know, Gray Galding is, is you know. 
I, I, I'm trying to think of something to say about him. He, he, he's come <laughs> over from the Cup Series. You know, he's come over from the Cup Series in which um, he – He's not performed as well. He he he's a guy that has had has sponsorship and brought sponsorship to the table, and uh, he's been able to stay in a rod but continue to bring sponsorship to the table. Uh, not really performed as well. I think he he the seat was vacated by Spencer Boyd, um, who's going to continue to stay on the team. Uh, in a part-time basis, but has moved over to the truck series because of that, um, you know, sponsorship being brought to the table. Uh, <laughs> I think that's about all I can say when, that, when it's that's coming That's all back. you got, huh? I got it. Let's move on yeah, to Michael and Ed. Let's move on to Michael and Ed. He's running at 187.484 currently. Uh, Michael and Ed, uh, I think you can find a little bit more to say about him than, than, than Gray, but go right ahead. <laughs> well, with Michael and that, he he's he's over at, at Junior Motorsports. He's had opportunities at Junior Motorsports. He's coming back this year, and I think that as the team continues to develop, and they're missing out on that that veteran status over there, they don't have the Elliott Sadler over there to help them out. Where he, you know, Michael and that is becoming the veteran over the, at that team. Um, they're going to cycle in and out one of their cars. They're going to have uh, Greg um, Noah Gregson in, in the other car. Um, so he's become the veteran of the team over there, and he's the he's the driver that they're going to uh, he he's they're going to have they're going to start looking to in order to uh, um, go throughout the year. I think he he comes from open wheel racing, dirt racing, things like that. So he has. Uh, a, a quite a background in various forms of motorsports that is very helpful to the team. Um, if he just learns the, the the building of the cars and the setups of the cars, I think that he could he could perform much better than he does right now. Well, uh, the the torch, the Earnhardt torch, maybe has been passed. We don't know. Still to be proven, uh, but still part of the family. Maybe not the direct bloodline lineage as far as father son go. But the nephew, I believe, of Dale Jr. is Jeffrey Earnhardt. What are your thoughts about him? Jeffrey has been in need of rides for a long time, and I mean quality rides because Jeffrey has been a, a, a guy that has been. Uh, I, I think he, he he has a lot of opportunity and a lot of talent in this sport. Um, yesterday I saw him drafting with the main pack. He's got JGR, which is um, uh, um, fielding the team this weekend. He'll be part-time with that team. And then also they, he's, his sponsor uh, is fielding a team of their own. Uh, so, you know, he, he now has an opportunity to showcase what an Earnhardt can do. And for him, I, I think this is his best opportunity to date, in which he could, uh, in in which he could, um, he he can perform, uh, and actually do something more than ride around the racetrack. Um, not that he rode around the racetrack per se, but he's not been in the type of equipment that could. Uh, um, perform and, and run at the at the top of the pack or at the front of the board. In the top ten, qualifying right now with Xfinity is a, is a couple three Cup drivers, and that's Chase Elliott, Brad Kowalski, and Christopher Bell. We certainly want to talk about them here in just a moment when we get over to tomorrow's race. But for today's race, uh, we look at. Uh, 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 Chase Elliott, Brad Koloski, and Christopher Bell, uh, Chevy, Ford, and Toyota in the Xfinity Series. What are your thoughts? Brad Koloski is in a restricted plate race. Make sure that he's one of your number one or number two picks because that guy not only knows how to qualify a car, but he can he can keep these large packs at bay, and he's very, very tough to get around when it comes to these events. So if he's in the race, watch out for him. And by the way, side note on Fantasy NASCAR, um, 
I know I'm like the top competitor out there, and you guys are afraid of me, but I did not get my official fantasy car invite, so I need you to make sure that happens today. Do, 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 are we clear on that, Steve Wilson? I know I, know I dominate. I dominate, and you don't want me in the field, but, hey, I need to get my invite. So, uh, fantasy-wise speaking, uh, go, <laughs> go on into hey, look, I'm not, a, I'm not always – I'm not always the best in these fantasy games either. Sometimes I, I've got so many things going. I just pick a whole bunch of drivers and hope that something and, sticks. And hope for the best. Well, I'll look for my invite to, uh, today. Uh, but uh, it's fantasy-wise, okay. though, uh, fantasy-wise today uh, for, for this weekend, uh, who, who who do you got? Uh for today, uh, for today, I've got I mean, for tomorrow. Lock. I mean, just for the weekend, for the weekend, oh, for the weekend. I'm sorry. Oh, for tomorrow. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of great teams <laughs> out there right now. Um, I, I, I'm going to pick somebody. I'm going to have to pick somebody that is in the Ford. They've won four out of the last eight events here, and out of like nine out of the last thirteen restricted plates, or nine out of the eleven last restricted plates, they've won. So. Um, if they're in a Ford and a blue oval, I'll watch for them to come to the front and potentially be in victory lane. The Daytona 500 is the granddaddy of them all. It happens tomorrow in Daytona, Florida. Steve Wilson from Speedway uh, uh, Digest, uh, editor-in-chief and our official NASCAR contributor, joins us from uh, sunny Florida. And, uh, you know, it's one of the few sports where the, the, the most elite uh, event, if you will, the Super Bowl of the event it starts at the beginning of the season. Uh, certainly, it's equivalent to IndyCar's Indy 500, the Super Bowl, and the World Series. Uh, talk with us a little bit about what makes Daytona so special. Well, we've been coming down here for 61 years, and this race has kicked off the season since then. Um, we've been racing on the beach ever prior to even that. This race has prestige around it within uh, on NASCAR, just like the Indy 500. It's not your first race. It's not your last race. But it's the race that everybody looks forward to all year long. As soon as they leave here, every team, every fan, every driver, every team member thinks to next year. And I think that's probably true with the uh, with the Indy 500 too. Is as soon as you leave that marquee event, you're you're looking to next year, the prestige mm-hmm. that comes with it that you get to say that you're an Indy, uh, Indy 500 champion or a Daytona 500 champion sticks with you for life. Uh, you know, there's dozens of other races throughout the year in which you could say that you're an ex champion from whatever race. But it just doesn't hold the prestige of saying that I'm a Daytona 500 winner. Uh, you know, the, that sticks with you for life. And, and even some of these drivers over the years that has won the Daytona 500, they, and they've not gone on to have a very successful career. Everybody still knows they're a Daytona 500 driver. Well, let's get into the starting grid for tomorrow's race, Daytona 500. Obviously, William Bryan, another a young uh, up and coming. We've talked about the young versus the old. This is a perfect example. But we also talked about the curse of the pole of Daytona. William Byron gets to be on the pole in 2019, Daytona 500. Uh, he's young. He's got a lot to learn. I think he would be well served that if he's not going to be able to uh, keep the pack at bay. Uh, he he falls back. Um, I'm not saying that he should fall to the back, but I think that he if he feels that that car is capable enough, then I think that he should follow along and watch what other drivers are doing, more experienced drivers, and then formulate a plan throughout the race. Um, now, if he feels that, and the team feels, and I'm sure, you know, there's 39 other drivers all out there that feel like they can run up front in front of a pack of 40. But if they truly believe that they can do that, 
and I think they should take their best shot and stay out front. But aside from that, I think experience factor is going to come into play. And over the 500 miles, 200 laps tomorrow, um, I, I, I think a young driver,